I'm Savage Jim and I just wanted to go over the uh, disassembly and maintenance of an Elcon clutch. Uh, this is a clutch I just taken out of my uh, uh, 26cc gasoline engine and uh, I'm ready to take it apart for some maintenance. Uh, the shoe as you can tell there's some uh, there's a lot of scouring and wear and uh, as you can tell from uh, just this over here on the, on the side over here you can tell that it's been worn down uh, so there's a lot of material that's been uh, taken off of this clutch so this clutch has seen uh, quite a you know more than its fair use of, uh, of its lifetime and it's time to get rid of these shoes and put in some new shoes um, I don't have the new shoes in yet so I'm just basically just going to go over how to disassemble the Elcon clutch and uh, when I get the shoes in I'll go I'll describe on how to reassemble it before I begin the disassembly I actually want to go uh, do a quick comparison of an Elcon clutch as compared to the stock Zenoa type uh, two shoe clutch uh, the Elcon is a four shoe clutch uh, you can tell from these uh, these four marks over here that each side is a is a shoe surface that comes out and deploys through centrifugal forces against the inside of a clutch pell. This is a clutch pell right here. All four of the shoes deploy out and engage the inside surface of the clutch shoe of the clutch pell. And what that does is it gives you a superior contact area than your standard two shoe type uh, swinging arm clutch. Uh, this over here. You know, I can't pull it out. It's really strong. That spring right there. That's uh, that's rated for probably about a. I'm not sure what the black spring is. Maybe a 6,500 RPM. Uh, this this over here is it. Uh, this is over here is not only superior in its gripping ability. This is also superior because it's adjustable. You could uh, there's four springs in here on each you know on each side of the shoes, and uh, that allows you to adjust the uh, the the uh, RPM engagement. You could adjust it to uh, over 8,000 RPM before the shoes deploy and engage the inside of the clutch bell. To disassemble my Elcon clutch, uh, these are the tools I'm going to be using. A, tool, a two millimeter Allen wrench from this Allen wrench set. A T9 Torx wrench as well because these screws require the Torx style wrenches to get them undone. And again, uh, I'm using a ratchet bit T9 because uh, I did tread lock these so these are under really good and I'll need to have the assistance of the extra torque from this uh, from this uh, eighth inch drive ratchet set and uh, Torx bit to put this back uh, to put it back all together again I have this uh, this tread rock uh, tread lock I'm sorry this is a uh, you know blue tread lock right here one of the first things I'm going to do, I don't have to do this to, to maintain the clutch, but I'm going to do it anyway to maintain and check the grub screw, is I'm going to take this 3mm uh, Allen wrench, stick it in into this hole right here, and I'm going to loosen that grub screw. Uh, it's in there really tight, so I'm going to have to give it some force here. Now, I'm, I'm going to do this slowly because it's tread locked in there and I did not want to ruin my wrench nor damage the, the grub screw that's inside that set screw that's inside okay there we go it's a little bit loose now alright it just comes out the other side I'm going to give this a good inspection here the treads look very very healthy so when it was in the engine, you know, the, the treads were never damaged, even though the RC itself, uh, you know, has taken a lot of bumps, tumbles, and hits. And uh, I'm going to clean that off. That's just dried up tread lock. That goes right up in there. To put this screw back in, to simply twist it into this hole right here on this side of the Elcon clutch body, in this, uh, this uh, billet machine piece right here. And... Just turn it back in the opposite direction until it's tight. I'm just doing a you know rather loosely right now because I'm, I'm I I want to clean off that old tread lock and before I put on new tread lock and put this back into the clutch. 
into the housing here. Now the next thing to do is to begin to disassemble the clutch itself. I'm going to have to use this uh, tor uh, the Torx ratchet bit because uh, the tread lock is, is under rather tight. I'm going to put this 4mm Allen key onto the adjustment screw right here, the adjustment, uh, adjustment set screw and I'm gonna that will give me some uh, leverage against that because okay pulling that apart yeah that tread lock is on there pretty tight it did its job very well okay there's that screw there's dry tread lock on it, so I'm going to have to clean that off. And on the other side, see there's the post, I, that's the screw I took it off, this post over here. I'm going to do the same thing from down here. Again, this is tread lock pretty tight, so I'm going to take my uh, T9 bit on my ratchet and proceed. There it is, that's good enough for me to use the little screwdriver, the Torx T9 screwdriver and yeah it's still pretty tight in there because they uh, the dry the tread lock that's in there alright there we go here we go and the screw over here this one is longer this goes on the underside through the billet piece uh, not this uh, not this flat plate piece on the top so long one on the bottom Long one goes on the bottom right here, and short one goes on the top on, on the thin plate up here. Alright, this post is now loose. I'll simply pull that out with my finger just like that. And I'm going to pull up this uh, set screw. I'm going to check this grub screw. I want to check the threads and make sure they're in, uh, in good serviceable order, that, they're, that the threads still look healthy. And same thing for inside the post where the screw went in. I want to make sure you know that's nice and healthy too. That's kind of dirty there, so I'm gonna have to give that a little bit of a clean. So I won't lose the piece. I'm, I'm just gonna loosely uh, screw these pieces in. I'm gonna do this again for the other three posts. I'm gonna pause the video while I do that. Alright, I have removed all four of these posts here. I have just put the screws on rather loosely and, uh, and the adjusting grub nut loosely in here. With all four posts taken off, this thin plate comes off just like that. And now you have your shoes that you can simply pull apart. The shoes, just simply slide them off straight out. Watch out because the spring and uh, the brass button could actually come out if you're not careful. So they just simply all pop off just like that. Once you got the four clutch shoes taken out, this is what the clutch shoes look like. This is like uh, two of them together. This is one clutch shoe right here. Uh, what you need to do is you need to extract this little button right here and the spring. What you could, uh, I'm using this uh, one millimeter hex driver. I'm pulling that, pushing that little brass stud piece out. and then I'm also using this to help extract the spring. These things could be a little bit of a pain in the neck to get out but when it comes to uh, replacing these shoes these springs must come out and I almost have it and there it is the Elcon clutch is completely broken down all the way to its bare nuts and bolts. Uh, these are the shoes that I've used with this particular Elcon and uh, well they're in pretty bad shape. A lot of, uh, a lot of material has been lost on the, on the shoe contact surfaces. And this is what all four of them look like. They form a circle like that, and when they deploy out, all four of them come out 
and like just like that and they engage the inside surface of the clutch bell all right now that I have this all taken apart I'm going I'm going to give all the pieces a good cleaning and I'm also going to uh, do another video of reassembling the Alcon clutch this is Savage Jim signing out